Hey guys, it's Alex from Brainbook, and we're here for the next bit of Brainbook content in collaboration with Merlin Strangeway, who's an extremely talented artist who's made the graphics and animations for this video. Today we're going to be talking about the pathway to becoming a neurosurgeon in the United Kingdom, and this is the main pathway through a GMC or General Medical Council accredited program. <laughs> to become a neurosurgeon, UK edition. This is a brain book video with graphics and animation by Merlin. Neurosurgery is a really small specialty, especially within the United Kingdom. There are two ways to become a fully trained neurosurgeon here in the UK. The first is through a General Medical Council accredited national training program. And the second is through an alternative pathway that ends with a certificate of eligibility for specialist registration, or CESA. Today we're going to be talking about the GMC accredited national training program. So let's say you're living in the United Kingdom, you're pre-university. The first thing that you need to do is get into medical school. And that's a topic for another time, but on the whole you need pretty good science-based A-levels to get in. Once you're in medical school, you've got five or six years ahead of you. Six years if you want to undertake an intercalated BSc. At this point, some medical students know whether they want to be a medic or a surgeon, which is a good starting point, but it's absolutely fine if you don't know yet. Some people will already know whether they like brains by now, and some people will have known they wanted to do something brain-related even before uni. Towards the end of medical school, everyone has to apply nationally for something called the Foundation Training Programme, or the Academic Training Programme. In the UK, all doctors have to do this before they can even think of applying for specialty training. Foundation Year 1 enables medical graduates to begin to take supervised responsibility for patient care and consolidate the skills that they've already learned at medical school. Satisfactory completion of the first year will result in the relevant university recommending to the GMC that the doctor can be granted full registration. During Foundation Year 2, doctors remain under clinical supervision, as do all doctors in training, but they take on increasing responsibility for patient care. In particular, they begin to make management decisions as part of their progress towards independent practice. Satisfactory completion of F2 indicates that a foundation doctor is ready to enter core, specialty or general practice training programs. The selection for surgical specialties, including neurosurgery, happens about three months into the F2 year. The neurosurgery selection process in the UK is a national selection process, which means everyone goes through exactly the same selection process and interview for all the same jobs, which can change year on year. The initial application to be sort shortlisted for an interview is a paper or white box application that scores you based on the following criteria. Qualifications, clinical experience and knowledge, academic skills, personal skills, professional integrity and dedication to specialty. If you score high enough for shortlisting, you're then invited to interview, which is an intense and very long day in Sheffield. There are eight interview stations, five of which are clinical and three of which are practical, and the clinical stations are 15 minutes each. At each interview station, you're tested on all of the above criteria by at least two or three consultant neurosurgeons in each station. If you make it through this arduous process, you'll be one of 15 to 20 junior doctors every year that embarks on the eight-year neurosurgery training program, and that's all the way through to the end of training. Year one consists of training in neurology, neurointensive care and a bit of neurosurgery. In year two you do a bit more neurosurgery at the ward-based level and do another specialty like ear, nose and throat or maxillofacial surgery. In year three you start to level up and become a neurosurgery registrar in most places and also undertake accident and emergency training, usually in a major trauma centre. From year four onwards, you're a fully-fledged neurosurgery registrar, 
operating on elective lists, running registrar clinics for your consultant and looking after your consultant's patients. At ST6 level, you become eligible to take the FRCS exam and that's the Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons, which is the exam that proves that you've got the knowledge and clinical decision capabilities to become a consultant. It's worth noting that to get through to ST3 level, you need to have taken the MRCS, or Membership of the Royal College of Surgeons exam. As training ends, most registrars will undertake one or two years of fellowship training, which is sub-specialist training, in an area of neurosurgery that they want to specialise in when they become a consultant. At any point during training, it's also possible to undertake a master's or PhD program, which adds at least another two or three more years to your training. So completing neurosurgical training can take anywhere between eight to 13 years to complete. It's a pretty long, arduous process, but it's fantastic training and the end goal is brilliant. So that was a quick overview of the pathway to becoming a neurosurgeon in the United Kingdom. Hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you like BrainBook videos and you enjoy this channel, please subscribe and share. We can't do this without you. And for those of you applying for neurosurgical training in the coming months, good luck.